Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Man, one of my favorite people, man. The brother Killer Mike. Welcome, yes, brother. Indeed. Man, here with my brothers, man. How y'all doing, man? How you feeling? I came looking good, so I feel good. Because Dion go. say you, you 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 look good, you play good, you play good, they pay good. So there you go. I'm gonna see how that goes. Shouts out to Coach Coach, man. Dion Sanders just hit me. I'm walking through the middle of the mall. Really? Coach just said, I just called to check on you, man. So man, that's just, what it is. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate that. that, that man, Because as a kid growing up in Atlanta, you look at Dion on TV. Mm-hmm. He, him, Dominique Wilkins, man, they, man, so Dion had all my dreams and came true. I just want to start by thanking the Lord. I don't there think you we under, uh, understand how special Dion Sanders is, man. Like, we don't understand mm-hmm. how. First of all, people don't realize how big of a superstar he was really? in that era. Yeah, in his prime, and yep. I say he's the greatest athlete ever. In wow. the history of life. Give it to him. Because he played football and, and baseball, baseball at a high level. He damn sure. You know what I mean? Nah, One time he played it. both in the same day. Yeah, yeah. You and know? Uh, man, then they went, they, they, somebody sat him so he couldn't enter the game. So mm-hmm. I don't know which coach he did, but that wasn't cool, coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now, nah, Dion, absolutely, man. He, yeah, that, that's an argument for real. Mm-hmm. Like he did. And he was, besides being one of the great, greatest athletes ever in terms of baseball, football, on and off the field, he was, a, he was pre. Marketing, he understood marketing yep. at a level that that the athletes got after. But man, Nike should have blessed that man with his own signature. They should have gave him the life that he should have been a, one of the ones. I think mm-hmm. they got scared. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. They got they might have got a little scared because he was so big. And, like, and, he, yeah, and he was doing a lot. They never seen anything like that. Yeah, the world had. I yeah, remember. Right. I still remember being a kid on the draft day. We in the ek glasses, the old school stuff. Remember mm-hmm. the, with the snake skin and all the jewelry. I just remember like, oh, he coming to Atlanta. Oh, like it's on. He looked like every major drug dealer my mama knew. <laughs> <laughs> and he spoke he spoke as well as any college cousin I had. Yeah. And he yeah, he changed the game and I think Allen Iverson also did when when, when his time later years, way years later. I think they both yeah. changed the game of, of both those industries. Yeah, but I think Dion sat down and plotted it out. Like mm-hmm. you like Dion Sanders Dion like as kids, we knew Dion didn't smoke and drink. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. we knew, so we didn't feel mm-hmm. no temptation. With AI, I think AI was just so brilliant and talented and raw that serendipity kind of brought it to him. But with Dion, I literally think he sat down in a college dorm room and said, This is what I'm doing. Similar to Shaq. Shaq is, is brilliant as well. Absolutely. Like, you know, I'm glad you brought up marketing, right? Because there was an article that came out that said, For the first time in 30 years, no hip hop single or album has went number one this year. And when I think of the brilliance of this project that mm-hmm. you are putting into the ecosystem called Michael. It's out today, by the way. It's out right now. Yep. I've, I've 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 heard it. I think it's a classic. I want everybody to make their own decisions. But when I think of the brilliance of this project, when the album is as special as Michael, how do you promote and market it? Well, it's it's it is is more than a classic. It's a generational statement. Mm. I would have settled with a classic a few years ago. I would have been happy to say, oh, that should have got five mics. It would have felt good to say this is a classic album. But I had gave you a classic album eleven years ago with mm. rap music. So if I'm gonna come back. After eleven years, I had to make a generational statement. Mm. If you are, if you, if you know me, you've known parts of this album, and there's parts you just never known. So for me, you're a black man, working class man in America, somebody who's come up under the last fifty years of the hip hop generation. We got pain and trauma untalked about, stories of glory untold. We have a view of and a world perspective that the world desperately needs to see. And I gave it to you on this record. It is it is one of the absolute best rap, rap albums ever created. I think I, I ask you this all the time when you come up here. Do you do you ever feel that you're getting your just due? Because I mean, you're everybody's favorite rapper's favorite rapper, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and, You've and been people, in my top five. Yeah. yeah. And you've you been talk, saying this South Carolina. About, That's right. People talk about your lyricism and and how how nice you are and how you could play with words and how you could body everybody. But I also feel like you don't get the I don't want to say the exposure, but the press or the accolades as you should. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I wore a black T-shirt too much, but as you can see today, the only L's I'm wearing all the time. You know, shouts out to my man Chris. But no, nah, my thing is, man, for whatever reason, I was overlooked as a rapper. I, yeah, yeah, as a, as a rapper, as a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I care about being a rapper. The little nine-year-old boy on the album cover, he just wanted to be a rapper. Right, right. You know, everything right, right, right. else came through serendipity. Like you wanted to be a DJ. You mm-hmm. were born to do radio. Mm-hmm. But man, I wanted, I wanted the glory, not just the, from my from my peers. In this album, I bet you the opinion changed day after tomorrow. Mm. I bet you have, or, the, or today after mm-hmm. the day, I bet you have to listen and say, "Hey, man, I got to give it up, dog. Mm-hmm. I can't play." You know. So my thing is, man, my story. You never know why God put you in the place He put you, or travel through the journey you travel. But I was meant to do it this way. You couldn't have told me twenty years ago that the guys who were amazingly relevant at that time 
would now be on to other things and I would be in the middle of being one of the most relevant rappers. You couldn't have told me that. You know, I just had to trust and walk through. You know, after Run the Jewels, we a decade, we've been dominating for a decade. People were like, what? Yeah, we've been doing festivals, we've been doing shows, opening for Rage Against the Machine, sold our tours. We've been on tour this fall. We're doing New York, LA, Chicago, Atlanta, four nights, every album. So after that run, you, you get to sit down and you know the devil say, hey man, you done got everything you ever wanted. Now you rich, you got all the cars, you know what I mean? You got a beautiful wife. And I say the devil because a lot of times the devil's in the details. You think I've accomplished everything I want to accomplish. I done finally figured it out. Finally made millions of dollars. But now nah, I still want comfortable. I was sitting home, like, but I still haven't showed them who I was. Did you ever, you ever, and, and, and of course you've been relevant with all the groups that you named and yourself, but did you ever think at one time, be like, you know what, maybe this is not for me? Because you think about it right now, we're all at, at you know, our 40 year old prime, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you, or spitting and sounding better now than you did back then. Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I've evolved. I mean, I was spitting better than, than whoever you liked at the time then. That's a fact. But but, but <laughs> you know, my 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 thing was my my thing was I knew that the mind could get sharper, and I knew if I stayed focused and I didn't pay attention to other people in terms of chasing whatever was. I knew because in Atlanta it's easy to start chasing because every two three years it kill itself and it rebirth something mm -hmm. like a phoenix like so. I didn't want to. I didn't want to try to be crunk or snap and pop. On the, I could do those. I did records, but I didn't want to be that. So I just was on a journey. Like Rico said at the start of the album, man, it's just been a journey. Mm -hmm. it ain't been hard. It's been a journey. But but now we own it together. You know, I I don't know what this album will chart or won't chart. But I know if you hear it and you tell ten of your hip hop loving friends, it's gonna chart. I know if you hear it next week or the week after or year after, it's gonna it's gonna you gonna feel something. That's what I care about. Mm -hmm. I care you feel something. I care you felt me before I go. I need you to call Charlemagne and say, hey, man, I see why you said that about mm -hmm. Fat Boy, man. Mm -hmm. Like, Fat Boy going. You know what I mean? He he talking about parts of my life I don't talk to my wife about. When you hear shed tears, Oof. you know, I, I shed tears every morning in the bathroom mirror face to face with me. Had to face my fears. It was me. I'm the reason that I failed. That was hell. Locked the self guilt like jail. Lord, I cried. Almost died empty inside. The devil whispers in your ear. You contemplate suicide. Tell you I know. Promise on has been there before. But it's pride before the fall is how I usually go. Mm. Oh, man, as a man. Mm. What man ain't gonna hear that and not mm. say man? But let's talk about it. That's, you know, you're being very that's, intimate on this album. Like you're opening up. You I want, am. You want, you're letting everybody see your soul. I am. The Why? therapy and, and, the, and, the, and the DJ Envy advice, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I got to, you know, <laughs> shouts out to therapy too. I got to give you and Shanti Dodds credit for that. You know, that Absolutely. the silence of shame that when you, it, yeah, man, you get to talking. I'm doing something with Shanti today, man. Yeah, man, shouts mm -hmm. out to Shanti. You guys don't know Shanti Dodds is a music industry executive. She left, dealt with some depression and mourning, and then came back stronger than ever, mm -hmm. helping other people deal with theirs. So mm -hmm. support Shanti's organization, you know what I mean? Could, could you have done this album without taking the 10-year break as a solo artist? No. My, I owe so much to my rap partner, you know, LP and Run The Jewels as a group, mm -hmm. and shouts out to DJ Trackstar, you know, and, and my little niece, Pooh Amina Blue. Um, because, man, you, you, you have to be in a safe place mm -hmm. To, to do what I just did and run the jewels musically set the standard and let you know, oh, the boy raw. Right. Like, let, let us quit trying to play in front. You see the crowds, you see the shows, you see us killing it, you hear the music, you hear us on sinks and soundtracks. But L really, I got a, I gained a discipline from him. And I, and mm -hmm. I appreciate that because I learned going on this journey without him how to take the best parts of mm -hmm. who we were with me. And I, I hadn't even said that to him, but I thank him, I love you for it because being around you, I, I I just learn, you know, and and I, and I I just appreciate L. So you know, I'm like everybody else, like let's get started on Run the Jewel Five. I'm in the mood to rap. I mean, that's all. So I'm aggravating let, them. Don't let the devil was a great little uh, yeah, was a, little yeah. appetizer. Like yeah. damn, yeah, man. What was that record? What was that? Was, no, was that all Run the Jewels record? Or was that specific? No, 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 no. It's all these records were made for Michael. Okay. Like me and Cuz Lightyear. Shouts out to Cuz in the building. Like Cuz put his own career on hold. He said, "I'm a pause, and we just gonna do Michael." I'm just like. Whoa, you know, and um, we were determined from day one that people understood that Michael is an origin story to a superhero. Killer Mike's a superhero. Mm. A, a, a nine-year-old mm. kid made up Killer Mike in his head. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, just like Charlemagne the God said, DJ Envy, we project mm -hmm. our strengths, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this nine-year-old kid, mm -hmm. this nine-year-old kid created this superhero character, you know, essentially that became Killer Mike, and he can't lose. He's not going to lose on the track. He's mm -hmm. not going to, and that's part of my my. Some people might have scathed over, they didn't notice, but the superhero is is a real human being back there. So Michael got a chance to sit next to Jamie and learn. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And in that learning, 
take that and say, okay, well, this is going to be the origin story. Run the Jewels is the X-Men. We the Uncutting X-Men. We got different characters coming in. Zach De La Roca, rest in peace, Gangsta Boo, Josh Hyman, you know, 2 Chains, Big Boy. But aside from the X-Men, the Wolverine was Logan before, and I needed people to see that. So, you know, I wanted people to understand that the Run the Jewels universe is even bigger and inclusive of Michael. So what, what me and L have done and what the discipline has given me has grown me up. So I don't think I could have done this without the last decade mm -hmm. of discipline, of understanding what the hard work takes. And I don't think I could have done it without the love and friendship with L because it showed me that who you are is already good enough. Rap-wise, you just got to figure out how to tailor your suit. So, you know, shouts out to L and, and the fans. Let's mm -hmm. keep aggravating them so we can get that RTJ5 movie and, um, and album. So, now, when you, what was your first song you wrote? Because I'm trying to figure out when did you realize I want to do this. I was thinking the same thing, Michael, yeah. And I want it to be autobiographical. Yes. Was it a song that you recorded that, that took you in that direction? Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same again? thing, yeah. No, I was just thoughts and feelings over the years. Like, um, when you look at Down By Law, the intro track, Down By Law was, the Obama was in office. Mm. You hear me? Say, yeah, Obama, yeah, yeah. please free my mama, my nigga. For, you know, a heart of a, a fleece free a side of my nigga. Like, I was, I, you gonna have thoughts and feelings. As an artist, you never stop. And it came time, the pandemic happened and I'm just sitting here. We've, rock, we've dropped Run The Jewels 4, biggest Run The Jewels record, dominating, but we can't tour and I'm sitting at home. After so long, everybody get tired of you. They not even used to you being around. Mm -hmm. Like, man. Mm -hmm. So me and Cuz just, cause he had just had my godson, Bricks. Shouts out to Cuz in the building. Mm -hmm. Um, we just start saying, okay, well, we gonna work it like we gonna work on. A, we was working on the villains mixtape and it's crazy music. We was in Miami and Atlanta running around. But then when Cuz said, "Nah, Cuz," he said, "Man, you got all these kind of just sprinkles." He said, "Man, it might be time to do it." And he put, like I said, he put his career on pause. So I went in seriously. So the first record would have been Down by Law, mm -hmm. and with Down by Law, it was just a freestyle I never finished, but I finished it. And then we just start saying, okay, we're gonna peel away the layers. We're gonna go deeper, cut deeper. And after about a year of recording, we had 39 records and we had um, what I felt like could have been a crazy mixtape. And we called No ID, because me and Dion had been talking about doing something forever. And I was like, I think we got something dope down. I know we got something dope down here, but I wanna fly it out and just play it for you and see what we get. He sent us some beats. We did some more records. We flew out. And that's when he said, man, I've been waiting for you to call me. And why, we got to work. Why, why no ID? Because this album also yeah. feels so Dungeon Family. Yeah, yeah. Rico it, Love, CeeLo, Andre 3000. You can throw even well, throw yeah, the characters and, and Ray Murray. I got to give yeah. Ray Murray a lot of credit. Ray was in the studio with us a lot. And mm -hmm. he wasn't pressing to get beats on there, but just saying he really held a standard. You, you got to stay true to the South. You got you. It got to be as cohesive as the chronic. It got to be as Southern as the height of Southern Oof. music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I know we've accomplished that goal and more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Ray, I got to give him that. With Dion, though, Dion, the thing about executive production is not about you going and saying, hey, I got the sound for you. It's about what I, Dion was, just, it was almost like Luke Skywalker and Yoda. I'm here and I'm expecting him to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And what the process was, was him seeing a more disciplined Michael in the studio and showing Michael and Cuz and the team, this is the way you get to who you are. Mm. So I, I hear I hear that. Um, now let's replace the sample and let's see how you want the bass to go. And Damo comes in and Damo says, I like this, I like this. And that's when you you start becoming a part of the structure of it and the work of it in a different way. So he taught me how to make a Michael record, mm. how to kill a Mike record. And you learn, mm. your instructor don't just give you anything. He sees where you go and he helps guide you like that. See, he really has a seafood-like quality about him. And he's been my friend now in 20 years. Wow. And, and, he's, and, and I've been talking about doing it 20 years and procrastination is the enemy and I'm glad I defeated that enemy. Reluctant at all doing this album? Was there anything like, ah, maybe I don't want to do this now or maybe it's not the time or what, was it, were you all what, the way in? It was the time because me and Cuz, we, we had the time and we, 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 we worked it like third shift. Like I said, he had just had my godson, him and his sis and it turned into, we gonna work 10 at night to four in the morning. The same, I, was the, I worked at UPS essentially. Mm -hmm. And so it just, the world gets quiet. You get in there, you start developing and you're like, oh, okay take the weekends off. I heard Paul and Juicy say that, unless they were working, they'd work five, eight weeks and take the weekends off. So I just structured my life. Mm -hmm. And with more structure, you know what my man Bear Lowe says, you know, discipline brings joy and joy brings discipline. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't always listen to Bear, but I'm about at about 45% now. But I listen to him and it enhances me, it makes me better. And I've, I've just learned to be a more disciplined 
music make a more disciplined artist, and 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 it definitely is more joy filled, and you hear it in the music. I, I want to go back to no idea real quick. Was the yeah. was four was Jay Z's four 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 any type of inspiration? Because it's mind boggling to me that no idea was an executive producer on four 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 and Michael, and I think. To me personally, I think four 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 is Jay Z's best album. I've heard that. From you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, not, maybe maybe not necessarily sonically, but what it represented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how it felt for me as a grown man. And a, I feel that same way about Michael. Was that was there any inspo with that? I think. Man, I, I I didn't take direct mm -hmm. inspiration, and Dion doesn't repeat itself, so he wasn't gonna Jay Z template me. But I mm -hmm. understand the parallel between the maturation of a black man, and, yes, I, and, and, it's, and I'm yes. honored to get that. I've heard. 444, I've heard um, Blueprint, um, I've heard a, a Matured Illmatic, I've heard Equimini comparisons, and all those I think are merited and they true, but they are not sound alike. Sonically, yeah. it's different, but I'll tell you this about Jay, man. Um, Jay has quietly been a friend and an associate for me for a couple years now, and that relationship, you know, people say, well, you take the 500 grand or the dinner, man, that's a hard question, because I got a $500,000 investment I like to make, but I have learned so much from short conversations with him, that if you prepare, it's like it's like no idea, like a teacher of seafood. If the students, is, when the students prepare, you know, the teacher teach, he says, I sent him the album early, earlier than I even sent it to you. Mm -hmm. And it was really rough still, but he hit back with all the exclamation points, I love the album. And then he hit back and said, it felt like I went to my cousin's house mm. and watched a movie. Now, mm. people who might not understand, you know, the, the black culture is, there's certain things you don't get to do till you go to your auntie house. You, you know what I mean? You don't. You don't. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You don't get to watch certain movies. Right. You don't want to do us. You can't stay up late. You can't it, eat it, certain it, food. Exactly, drink certain exactly. drinks. Exactly. When you at your auntie house, man, you balling. Right. My mama was that auntie. At my auntie house, you, I saw Porky's. <laughs> oh man, I, I, I saw I saw all uh, Clockwork Orange. You know what I mean? I just I got to do all. The, so man, when he said that, I was like, okay, I'm on because now it's a it's a visual experience via audio. And I just, I appreciate the courage, man. He gave me some critiques. We tweaked the critiques because we were in mix and I, I spent a lot of money. We went through like five mixers on this record. I cared about this record. I ended up spending half a million dollars. I ain't even tell Shay. Hmm. Damn. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, just the mixing and mastering? <laughs> no, nah, just in terms of putting that whole album together. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, at some point, I just blicked out. After the quarter million dollars got spent, I just blicked out. I was just like, I got, we got, I got to see it all the this way. It's the first time Shay hearing about this? Nah, I told him. Oh. I, I, I told him. I, I got it straight, y'all. I got it straight. I got it straight. Shay thought I had like another family in Bolivia or something. She was like, you know what I mean? She like, nigga, what a quarter million dollars this far? She like, you know what I mean? That's, that's a lot of money yeah. for this I, day and age. Especially. Yeah, I didn't buy a demon, though, like I wanted to. You know what I mean? But you invested in your career. Yeah, yeah. For people who know the story, I was going to spend a quarter million dollars on a car. She was like, nah, we're going to buy this. We're going to buy this, mm -hmm. this building. But, you know, I, I, I spent it on the album. And I'm proud. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, I, it was worth the gamble. Ultimately, you know, I still got I still got to pay that money back to the war chest, right? You know, Andre three thousand stacks. Now, now talk about getting stacks on the project. Scientists stacks. and engineers, yeah, scientists and engineers, man, stacks. So I call stacks when I get out there, and just say, hey, man, get out where? When I get out to L.A. So we LA, leave okay. Atlanta, right? We leave Atlanta. We leave Atlanta, and we. Say, he was just seen in Japan with, with a flute. This yeah, yeah, my man. He got the double flute now, the double barrel flute. He killing niggas, man. <laughs> Let me. But I, um, we was in Atlanta, and then we realized we hit our ceiling. Like I'm at home, I'm making a record inspired by home, but I, but I'm I'm too at home. You got to get uncomfortable mm -hmm. to grow, and and then we got to L.A. and the studio prices increased, but the quality of shit increased too. The the magician, the musicians that were coming in were magicians. They were working magic. Eric Allen Kane, we met out there. Um, you know, uh, Lena Bird Miles. Like the people we started working with was like, oh, this is pro. I've I've stepped into the pro. So I call stacks when I get out there. No expectations. And I'm like, Stacks, like, I want you to hear something. Because he changed my life. Him and Big Boy gave me an opportunity to change my life. So I want them to be proud of me. Whatever right. I'm doing, mm -hmm. it matter. Their opinion. And I play it for him. And I just want his opinion. And he like, kill. And you from Atlanta, you understand this word. Hard means, like, he said, kill. She hard, man. And I'm just like, that was, I was warm. I, I was mm -hmm. just like, man. He say, man, you mind if I call back tomorrow and bring you something? I'm like, do I what the fuck you talking about? You Dre three thousand. Mm -hmm. You let him hear the whole album or just that sound? I just let him hear. I think we had we had how many demos we had at the time? Yeah, we had close to forty okay. records at okay. the time. And so we were going to the trim and the fat process and he brought something and what he brought us through, cuz it already said no matter what he bring, we use it something. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm like, well, what if he just playing the fruit and singing? We gonna we using we, that. We using it. You right, know what I right, mean? Right, so right. I was like, all right, man, but he he came with two records. 
One was he was he was singing. It was a beautiful record. He ended up taking that one back because he wants to use it for something. And then he had the scientists and engineers verse, which as a rapper, you look for other rappers to get you excited about rapping. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit of competition. It's a shared. It's a fraternity. It's like DJing. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how big DJ MV is, it's somewhere he gonna see a fifteen year old kid that just got it, mm -hmm. and he gonna jump on the tables with that kid. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, man? But he's I was just like, okay, this it. And I'm listening to it like he mastered pattern. It's crazy. So him and um him and James Blake I think produced that part. He says we ought to put I think the idea comes out to put Future on it. He reaches out to Future and and Bello reaches out to Future. We get Future on it. It becomes it flowers. It opens up. No ID does that part. And then it's like okay now you gotta come behind this and you gotta shine in a way that's not mimicking that. You know because it's easy to pick a pattern. You mm -hmm. could you know computer engine coming in. I just said here I come and I'm again. You could it's easy to do those things, mm -hmm. but it's harder to come up with something original. So I, I sat with it a few months just riding it, listening, and then one day I went through seven, eight different flows, and then one day, the flow just came. Mm -hmm. I think I remember calling Cuz, and we were just like, I got it. Like, I got it, and then Paul, so the first half is Jay, I mean, the third is um, Dre and James Blake, then the next one, No ID produces on the future, you got future on the No ID beat, and then DJ Paul comes back in, mm -hmm. and, and goes under my, so man, it just, now at this point, it's just pornography. <laughs> this just this, this just a wet dream of your hip hop fantasy. Damn. It's like, man, it goes crazy, and the next thing you know, we got that, and then Aaron, at this point, who's become the voice of the album, I just, I love her. Hannibal Burrs, my comedian friend, brought her through. And man, we loved her so much, we kept asking her to come back. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you mind doing another one? And man, when she put her voice on it, it just, man, it just, it's like, it got hard, like cook crack. It was that. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, at first, it was just a super duper dope rap record. And that's what I tell the story of Stacks. So like, man, I think we just got a dope rap record, man. I was just saying, I want and I sent them with, with Aaron with the fuck, I want to live forever. To me, that um that resonated with Dre in my opinion because artistically he references feeling like time is running out. He references getting older. Mm -hmm. He references getting his second win when he's 80. Her and what she said that I want to live forever. Art is how you live forever. You never die. That's right. Basquiat is alive. Mm -hmm. Warhol is alive. Henry right. Osa Watana is alive. Ernie Burns is alive. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I am, art, am an artist. And I think that people never really saw that. They saw I'm a rapper. Oh, he can rap good. They saw he's intelligent, but I'm an artist at my core. I'm just a nine-year-old kid who like to draw, take pictures of Hot mm -hmm. Wheels, that I'll go in the High Museum. I'm, I'm actually I'm on the board of the High Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. I go to the High Museum of Art and spend three hours in there, stone as I can be. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have no hookah. I don't have to be, I don't <laughs> have to have nobody bring me a drink, even though we do do some lit nights at the High Museum. But I just, I'm, I'm a fan and I didn't want to die without having made my mark artistically. Let's go into this record. We'll come right back out. And yeah, it's a perfect example. Let's All get right. right into this record right now. <laughs> Killer Mike is here. His album's out today. It's Michael, and this is Scientists and Engineers, The Breakfast Club. Good morning. That was Scientists and Engineers. Killer Mike, his album is out today. Right now, you can pick it up, Michael. It's a classic. Um, I want to go back to Andre 3000. It's a generational one. statement. Generational statement. Mm -hmm. I love it. Classic that. is damn near cliche right now. I don't even think this generation knows what classics are yeah. anymore. They, they, they've they they've got a few, they though. They do today. Yeah. So I believe they have a few. They've got a few. They I use that term a lot, or, or goat. They use both those terms yeah, a, I'm a, a wolf. lot. I'd rather eat the goats mm -hmm. by have them by the throat. I want, I want to go back to Andre 3000. Y'all have such a special relationship. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. my guy. And clearly, you inspire Dre musically. I, I We heard scientists and engineers. Tell me if I'm speaking out of turn. Killer Mike played me a record one time, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, With man. him and Andre. Hey, I'm not even joking when I this hey, is one of the greatest hey, hip hop records. Hey. Just musical records I've ever heard hey. in my life. Hey, man. And and I'm I mean, talking about it, it's I can't even describe it. It's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> I That's, can't even describe what y'all doing on this yeah. record. And it's like 11 minutes long. <laughs> oh, I thought it was 16. <laughs> you know? What's crazy is that's the record he sent me after he took the other man. He was like, well, let's just try this. He sent it and we went. So th there is another Killer Mike and Dre feature. My God. And, and all we got to do is make this album go number one and make the guys over there from the label really, really happy. Mm -hmm. And I'll be right back next year. <laughs> no, this, 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 song be, this song should be a mini movie. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I agree. It's 16 minutes long, right? I'm not tripping. It was 11. It's about 11. eleven minutes. So you long. rap for five, Dre rap for five. Yeah, I think he. I think he got. I think no, no it's back about twelve minutes. It's seven and five. Seven and five. Yep. Okay. Wow. Who rap? Dre rap longer. Stack. Though. Yeah, stacks rap longer. He always rap longer. Man. When you yo. handsome, all the girls like you. You get to rap longer. And it's a. It's, <laughs> and it's a. It's a lady record. 
Yeah, it's a it's a record that women gonna like. And and players. Like if you're a player, you're gonna love it too. Listen, I'm trying to tell y'all. Like one of them ones. Well, you know, one you of like... my favorite records ever is International Player Anthem. I love that record. That that record gives we me a feeling. We're gonna take it back to talk about Michael. Hmm? Yeah, we can't talk about International Player. That record already hit. We got to <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm just saying, meaning I, I love I, 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 I love that light like skin <laughs> shit, man. I told you we're gonna be cool. Don't do that, man. I'm just telling you, yeah, I love this that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that record is phenomenal. But <laughs> Michael, um, what was more difficult to write? Something for junkies or motherless? Something for junkies got wrote because I got tired of carrying around the burden and the guilt, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, man, I literally remember, man, you know, an addict I used to, you know, you could tell them nerves on the fidgeting a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, um, let me tell the kids out there, so, man, y'all, y'all emulating y'all grandparents, y'all don't even know it. Y'all partying, y'all having fun, and y'all, you know, y'all don't understand, boy, around the corner is addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, our mamas was just having fun, mm. dancing, singing. They used to get dressed up. Your grandparents used to get dressed Absolutely. up. And cocaine was just a frivolous thing. And then they didn't understand that it was going to clinch into them. You know what I'm saying? And the next thing you know, the same kids that they was just telling to open the door in front of the store, they asking for blow. And and we were those kids, people of this age. So you carry around a certain, because you might have been hustling for some joys, prom stuff, but you'll never forget certain faces and certain things. Mm-hmm. And I remember this. It had, she said, Mike, you know, I was an addict. You know, she say, baby, you can't blame yourself. You was a child. You didn't know what, you know what I'm saying? You didn't understand what you was doing. And I had a conversation with my mama and my friends that, that really, it, it never left me. She said, you know, you think we shot with you because you Scarface or something? <laughs> She's like, I used to sleep with all the guys y'all get your dope from, baby. She say, I shot with you and we shot with you because you treat us like a human being. Mm. And boy, I never, that I, once she showed me my humanity, I never, it didn't mean I absolutely stopped trapping, but I never could shake that. Mm-hmm. So I needed to make something for junkies because I own three barbershops in Atlanta and we're expanding. I own one right on Edgewood Avenue. That's, that's a, historically a black dollar district, Edgewood and Auburn. And, you know, men whose life is defeated, I see in front of my window, young men who trying to figure it out, old men who couldn't get it figured out. So I admit there's, a, there's one guy named Kinfolk who be out there. And Kinfolk look out for our store and, you know, mm-hmm. you can tell when he's doing good or bad, but... He has such a good heart, but the addiction, you know what I'm saying? And I needed to make something for that. I needed to make something for that teenage Michael who's an adult right. to say that I just didn't know no better. You know? How, how does that make you feel, both of you guys, actually? Because both of you guys trapped, like, yeah. you know, to, to know what back during that time, you put the poison in the community because yeah. you didn't well, know. Well, you were a child. You was being right. used. Like I said, yeah, on Enrich. But now your, your yeah, whole life evolved where it's like you, you giving gems to the community. Absolutely. So how does that make you, you know, feel like thinking about back, both of you guys, about that? Well, for, for me, man, it's like a, it's like the Saul to Paul, like Saul's a Christian killer and, and became one of the, the, the stewards of, of, of the Christian faith. And if you have not walked with the devil, a lot of times you can't tell people how to get to the church. So that, even with that being said, that was not the most difficult song to write for me. Mm-hmm. It was a difficult song. It took me going in my humanity. But this is this is the part about having an executive producer like Dion, who knows you, who your friend. Mm-hmm. Like he hit me, say, hey, man, I know you. Th- you finished the album, but uh, I think we missing something. Mm. I'm like, missing something? What you talking about? We missing something? We got shed tears, something for junkies. We got enriched. We got, he say, man, what, what what, are you really afraid of? And I'm like, I already faced my fears. My girl's gone. I say, my grandma and my mama did. And he said, well, that's what that's we gonna rap about. And I'm right. like, no, we not. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't gonna rap about that. I never even said Denise was dead. I never said to my mama, I say she transitioned. Say she went on, I hadn't said any of that to nobody, mm-hmm. not to my children, not to my woman, not to my community. And I, I got in the booth and the, the he, he first he played the beat and I'm just like, I don't even like that. Shit. And he switched up right there. Then I tried to use the man, Ghostface already did mother's child. Nah, you gonna do this record. And I step in front of that microphone and the first thing I say is my mama's dead. Mm-hmm. You had never said that before? I never said that, my mama's dead. Wow. My grandmama's dead. To keep it honest, I get depressed and be feeling scared. Oh man, I I never been that transparent. I I had to be uh, strong for my children. I had to be strong for my family. And boy, just man, your mama died. You're not gonna be strong, even if you didn't have the best relationship with her. You're not gonna be strong. It's gonna it's gonna tear you up. So if if she's still alive, man, call her. Mm-hmm. You know, if y'all got some beef between you, say say you sorry. Like my grandma would say. <sighs> You got to give up your right for other folk wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm here to tell you, man, that record, boy, it tear me up to even talk about it because I wish I could, I wish I could call my girl and just pull up and say, you was right, because she told me. She said, 
She said, my mama wanted you. I was 16 when I had you, and you wasn't no mistake. My mama couldn't have any other children naturally, so I wanted her to have something that was her own. So when it was time for me to marry, I have two fathers. When it was time for you to marry, me to marry your, your other father, she asked to keep you. And all I knew the normalcy was me and my grandparents and my sisters. I had never thought about what does it take for a 16-year-old child to give up something mm. that they love. And, and it took me to the story of Solomon. In the Bible, my grandmother <clears throat> would take me to church. And they told a story of this king named Solomon. Two women was arguing over a baby. Yeah. And Solomon, as a, as a wise man advisor, said, well, cut the cut baby in your half. half and give one half to one. And the mother that said, no, keep the baby. And, man, I just. He realized that's who the real mother was. Oh, man, yep. I just think about Denise. And as, as tumultuous as her life could be, as adventurous as she was, she had the foresight to understand my baby going to be better mm. than my mama. And I just. I the, wish I could call to say thank you, man. Was that the <laughs> first time you had dealt with that grief in that yeah. moment? Yeah. So you never, you just suppressed it? You just, I just worked. Wow, I worked. Wow, wow, I worked. Wow. I, was, I, was, I said on the RTJ, you listen to RTJ, when my mother transitioned to another plane, I was sitting on a plane telling her to hold on and stay strong, but she just couldn't hang. Mm -hmm. True feels in two years, I'll probably ne never be the same. Oh, man. man. And, and I, so I had acknowledged that I mm -hmm. was, but man, I hadn't gotten the booth say, man, my mama's dead. Damn, girl, she gone, man. Yeah, I you saw know? when uh, Dion Cole was up here, and he, you know, what he said about his his his, his mother transitioning. I thought that really resonated with you. Oh man, I'm telling you, it, it's um, uh, you know, and I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a weep. I'm, you know, folk out there, yeah, you cry. I'm, no, I'm good right here. I, like I'm a crier. Yeah, I cry. I'm, I cry that. right before I beat your ass and shoot and do all that <laughs> ignorant nigga shit. You know, what I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But I, I miss my girl, man. Mm -hmm. If you and if your girl's still around, call you. And and that and that's past. This this album brought me. It, you know, I, I did, I, I wasn't always the best father, mm -hmm. meaning I'm traveling, I'm chasing a dream, and, and, I, and I didn't sit still. So I'm, I'm better with the younger than I was with the older totally in terms was, yeah. of being there. I wasn't always, I, I wasn't always the best helpmate to women that weren't necessarily my wife, but they done gave me children. Mm -hmm. And so my radif I radically changed my relationship with them. You know, the one I used to argue and fuss and fight with the most, she right now on the front row now at the, mm -hmm. at the, at the listeners. Like, cause you deserve a place of honor. Like when I see it on, the, on High and Holy, you know, to real niggas, it's my honor to pay you homage and extend the same respect to all your baby mamas. If you done yeah. had a baby by a solid dude, I'm gonna give you the same respect I give his wife. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you his children. So there are lots of me, to me, jewels and lessons in this that I had to learn myself that I'm just, that I'm, that I'm giving. And man, it's over some of the best music. My man, Lil Dicky, I was, I like him as a well, rapper. Hold on, hold on, let's, let's get in the motherless. I want to play in that Okay, one. let's I get in the motherless. Let's do this. This, 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 this is for the playing as much Killer yeah. Mike music as this possible. This is listening let's session go. this morning. Let's this get in the motherless right here. It's Killer Mike, his album is out. It's called Michael. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. All right, that was Motherless Killer Mike. The album is out right now, Michael. Yeah. You talking about Lil, Lil Dicky? You was talking about yeah. Lil Dicky. I, I, I actually saw him post about the album yesterday. Yeah, I, I yeah. saw I, I, Lil Dicky, as a, again, as a rapper, we're a fraternity. So mm -hmm. you cannot like that. You got who hits, who that. I'm here for bars. He got bars. He's one of the best rappers that I've heard, technically freestyle. So I already like him. I respect him. He invited me on the show. I came into the show. Episode. I yeah, had a yeah, bunch yeah. of fun. He but thought I, you had beef with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because of a tweet. <laughs> we and, and, and just I, we got we got to get some money in Greenwood for real. Like you got let, let's 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 figure out. You know we'll do we'll match seventy five hundred a piece. We'll do fifteen grand for Greenwood. Get you an account or something. But let's do something cool. But. Beyond that, I just love and respect the brother. He, mm -hmm. he, Dave's a great dude, but I sent him the record. That's what I just said. He was talking. I just sent it to him. And he hit me back with, man, just, brrr. he was like, the, he complimented the lyrics, the production, the mixing. The attention to detail that he paid on mm -hmm. that listen is like me standing in the High Museum in front of a, a Henry Osa Walt Tanner or, or a Wiley Tanner, just, just standing there and watching. And I just appreciated the time he gave, but Man, the compliments he gave his record. I wish he was a reviewer because mm. I think he took it more seriously mm -hmm, than a mm -hmm. lot of reviewers. Mm -hmm. I wanna, I wanna post it. So as an MC, when another MC hit you like that, with man, who mixed it? But Th this is, you know, he's talking about, you know, he's he's a white guy, so he he didn't grow up in church, but he's talking about the church, the organ, the mm -hmm. soul, or something. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, this is resonating, you know, because I knew we get it. Absolutely, we southern, you know what I mean. Absolutely. We get. I knew, I knew you'd get it because mm -hmm. musically, but I didn't know if the wider audience would get it. And it's hitting them; they getting it. Now, why, you why, why Fable Dickie? on uh, something for junkies? Fable's on something for junkies because 
man, there's something about an honesty in Fabo's music and his dealing with, he's from Bankhead. You know, like you hear mm-hmm. Bankhead, mm-hmm. you hear Tip, Dro, me, Shawty Lofe. Like if you from there, you know it and he mm-hmm. knows it. You know, a lot of people think he's just rapping geek culture and stuff. Fabo grew up in church. Mm-hmm. He grew up with a church. He yeah. wasn't, it, it wasn't even his family, I believe. It was with a church family, but he went to church with them. You know, you got some families, they, they'll come pick up all the, you know, mm-hmm. in the South, they'll come pick up all the kids in the neighborhood. Take them to these little small Pentecostal churches. You eat, you get a chance to learn music. You And so he has an authentic voice. I was waiting on D'Angelo. I was waiting on D'Angelo to kind of, to, to bless it, because I knew he had some soul and perspective, and I was thinking sound. And then I walked in Stank on you, shouts out to New Face. New Face is in there, and Fabo walks in behind him. And that's when I realized is God is is it, it stays anonymous through serendipity because mm-hmm. I didn't put that together. God Ooh. put that together. And I asked Fabo, I said, I want you to hear something and, and wh- what you think about it, what you could do to it. Next thing I know, Fabo was in the next day doing doing what he did on something for junkies. And it it to me, it takes the joke out of you looking at him laughing and it adds the soul that he really is. Right. I, had, I, had my, I, I told you this. I just wish DMX was alive to be on something. Oh, junkie, we man. wanted him for a prayer, man. We were trying to get him. Man. Jonathan Manion was trying to get him to do a, to do a prayer on there after I shed tears. Mm-hmm. And God bless the dead, he got out of here on us, man. But X, man. Was, X was one of the one. I was going to ask you, you know, you, you talk about Dickie, you talk about Hove. You know, who else surprised you that that, that they listened to your album? Like, damn, I, I didn't think he listened like that or... or or I didn't think he understood it like that. It mattered my brother and my other brother, Lil Duval, heard it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It mattered because, like, like Duval is Duval's that friend who's so painfully honest. Like, <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you this, man. I mean, it's put it out, but. Don't nobody put it out about with no visuals, shit. man. Them <laughs> <laughs> niggas don't care. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, he'll have he, 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 you look at, like, like, damn, question yourself. But it was important to me that my friends, more than anything, it was, it was important. It was just important they, they got it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The people who really know me know me. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I, I I can't say big boy. It mattered, you know, it mattered that big boy thought it was dope. You mm-hmm. know, it mattered that um Rico, Pat, and Ray that organized noise thought it was dope. It really, really mattered to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I sent it to like Clark Kent yesterday, I think. So it matters to me. Cause man, I just I want in the fraternity. I'm just a nine year old kid. I just I'm think about it. We from the South, it was impossible to be mm. a part of hip hop. That's right. Hip hop was just something we was looking at. That's right. Like, man, so, you know, I remember when, when he first moved to New York, boy, you'd have thought country folk threw a party. Cause just because he went big time. <laughs> us. Our man that made it out of, out of Mars Ford, he, he big time. So to be accepted, to be said to be one of the mm. greatest, that's what it is. Like, I got a Kobe Bryant mentality. I may never be Michael Jordan, but I'd be damned if I'm not gonna work my ass off to be that. Mm-hmm. Do you just it's Herculean. I can't defeat Zeus, but I'd be damned if I don't try. I ain't never took no L on no feature from Stacks. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. gonna show up and show out. Now, y'all, y'all, hey, I'd be happy to get a Stacks verse too, but I'm not gonna be lazy. That's right. I'm not gonna show up. I got a Stacks verse, I can be lazy. And right. I'm gonna show up and wrap my ass off. You're gonna say, hey man, fat boy and Stacks make a great combo. Mm-hmm. You're right. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play because this is such a small percentage of us that get this blessing. It's a blessing. Mm-hmm. I don't take this shit for granted. I don't take the money for granted. I don't take the fame for granted. I don't take the acknowledgement for granted because it was an impossibility. And you can take shit for granted now to the to the to the to the cats that's out there doing that. Man, you gonna regret it. Don't. Mm-hmm. You know, do you know invest in something so that you don't have to prostitute yourself. I, I do hope that Stax does something, and I hope you EP it. <laughs> no, I'm not even joking. I, I really do. No, I, I, I tell you, Stack said, I said, I, I, I take the EP for, um, for you know, I take, I take the rights because it look cool. But I, I get in there with me, him, and Cuz Lightyear. Cause right, Cuz right, gonna right. motivate you. Cuz gonna make you work. Like, Cuz, Cuz, ain't, Cuz, ain't, Cuz ain't said we, ain't, we ain't got time. Cuz, we got to get it done. He's, Cuz is quietly man. He's one of the best A and R's in the game. I'm so fortunate that I done built a 20 year friendship mm-hmm. and relationship, a brotherhood mm-hmm. with him. You know what I mean? He still right. got paid rate and stipend and salary. So if you call him, <laughs> pay him. You don't call my pot and ask for enough for free. How do you know it was this 14? Because you say you had like 40. How yeah, you we had, we had, yeah, we we tripped. Now, now just know now we got more. You, you know, and I don't mean like, so, you know, what's the thing now? You put out an album and you put out deluxe or whatever. Yeah. We got we got some stuff that we that we have, but we knew because this told a story from the from the beginning of of Down by Law to the end of High and Holy. What you have is an audio experience that's a visual experience. I encourage you to listen to it, you know, at home, um, sitting still or driving. 
Mm. So if you're going to do an hour's drive or an hour ride, I know mm -hmm. you do the bikes, you like bear, you mm -hmm. cycle, you're cyclist. I encourage you to do it so that you have the full experience. There are characters that pop up. If you know me, you know about Sleepy. He pops up in this album mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. way Ty will pop up on a J record. So you need to know this character. My mother, Denise, you need to know the character. And so it's more like an it's an it's an audio experience, but it's a visual. It's a visual in that you're gonna see it. You're not gonna hear it. You're gonna be able to 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 smell the smells, to hear the sounds, to see to see it the world in front of you. I want you to understand. I didn't understand until I started traveling. Most people have not had the life I've had. Mm -hmm. I'm I grew up in the Cary Heights section of Adamsville. I grew up in a neighborhood that was started by black people for black people. 1946. It had everybody from working class people like my grandparents in there to people who were professors and coaches at Morehouse, my own principal, shouts out to Mr. Twiz, God bless the dead, we just buried him. It had the richest black people in the Southeast and Herman J. Russell. It, it had Dr. King's family move there. What happens is as a child, as a black child who's so insulated in his own community, I didn't have a chance to be not confident. I didn't have a chance to even think I wasn't competent. I lived in the Carrier Heights, I went to Cary Heights Elementary. All my teachers was black. I had three white teachers my whole life. All these teachers were super black, hyper intelligent. We're gonna push you to be that. And then I go to Frederick Douglass High School. This is one of the greatest Americans ever. One of the greatest black people ever. Mm -hmm. How, and, and Dr. Hill, so when y'all hear T.I. use big words, that's what our principal did. Mm -hmm. So let's get to class expeditiously. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Dr. Hills right now, look at the TV, look at me and Tilt say, they're my boys. If he wouldn't have invested in us, the way he invested in us, then I wouldn't have been self-assured. By the time I got 15, 16, you started mingling outside of your, your peer group and stuff, that I'm 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 enough. I know already. So I've had this special life. Because of Atlanta? Is that like a unique Atlanta, Atlanta spirit? Absolutely. Yeah. I didn't have no excuse for failure. Every mm -hmm. Atlanta mayor for the last 50 years have lived within eight miles of me. Mm. The current mayor moved to the neighborhood I grew up in. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what what excuse did I have? I just had to figure it out. You know, you have to stay determined. The young people out there, stay determined. The old people out there, stay determined. Figure it out. Is, is Are you going to get it right all the time? Nope. Mm -hmm. Are people going to give you your proper credit? Absolutely not. Are you going to be misunderstood? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But keep plugging away. Do not stop pushing. Because the minute you stop pushing, death starts to set in. Mm -hmm. And then you start to doubt yourself. Oh, man. Oh, uh, could I do it? Or uh, uh, was it for me? It's, nah, man. Take every day as a sign of hope. I wake up every morning and say, "Oh shit, I ain't dead." <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's get to it. Let me, you know, what I mean, let me do a little three mile, a little stretch out there. But right. I ain't dead, so I got another shot. And that's that's ultimately, Michael is not my is not the the um, overcoming of an underdog. Michael is the you finally see who I always been. Do you think hip hop is in any trouble? And what I mean by that is, you know, it did come out yesterday. Billboard said there's been no number one hip hop albums, no number one singles all I, year, first time yeah. in 30 years. I'd like to change that. I'd, I'd like to suggest mm -hmm. that, that would people, be amazing. I'd like for people to push the line on Michael. Uh, I don't know because I don't, I, I grew up loving this when charts didn't even validate us, they mm -hmm. didn't even That's acknowledge true. us. Mm -hmm. We didn't get played on MTV if it wouldn't have been for Bob Johnson and BET. And, Shows like Teen Summit, with our, our perspective and point of view wouldn't have gotten known. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm used to an era where we not a part of the system anyway. The question for me, though, to the hip-hop listener, is are you fulfilled? Mm. After, after you hear what you hear, does it make you confident that I can do it too? Does it give you a challenge? And I don't mean I can do it too. Like, that ain't nothing to do. I can do it too. But, no, I can do this. Like, I, the first time I heard KRS-One, mm -hmm. like, oh, man, I, I could do this. First time I heard Ice Cube, Scarface. Oh, I could, I could, I could do this. I think like this. So I don't know if we are in danger because charts and um, big money not acknowledging us. So we haven't been. What I do know is we're in danger if all we have to offer ourselves this year is what we got last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I, I think I want us to realize our full potential because you come from an era where. You know, you you you, you we got to do things like this. You need radio. You yes, need yeah. you know relationships. Yeah. To me, that helps you build generational wealth. Like, yeah. why do it half ass by yeah. just putting a song out online or yeah. dropping a surprise album? Like, go out there and and, and do the do the walk, well, the yeah. campaign. It's, it's also the money and the greed as well. Because I mean, mm -hmm. a record label is less likely looking for an artist and more likely looking for, for a, a song. TikTok sound. Yeah, yeah, song. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Something going on TikTok, exactly. they'll give an artist two million dollars. And that's yeah. all they got. They, yeah, they're paying I don't, for I don't a want song. a label to break a song. I want to break an artist. Yes, I want to see this. I'm with I, you. Want you, I want you to maximize your potential so you could be here 20 years. Well, from I, I got to definitely give it up for Loma Vista and, and, and just say that um, 
meeting meeting Tom and Ryan over there. Dart, who's been, I, I'm gonna tell you, man, just accept friendships with, right. without mm -hmm. the promise of something coming mm -hmm. out of them. Mm -hmm. You know, Dart was at Shady for years. Dart would just call me in the middle of the night. Hey, hey, Mike, man, I'll just listen to that 10 G's. I'm just saying, hey, don't quit. This is, you don't know what them don't quit calls do. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. And all of a sudden, right before, right before I'm set to leave Los Angeles, I get a hit from my manager, Will. Um, and we've been in this 16 years together. He started at an indie label I was at, been managing me the last 12 years. Will hits me um, and says, man, it's this one more label we, we got we to gotta pull up on. And I knew it was serious because he say, I want you to ride with Stretch because Stretch in the Benz, I'm in the Prius. You don't need to pull up in a Prius. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, cool. We ain't going to pull up in the Prius because Jay-Z made a move his Prius when he drove the Jay-Z. He's like, move that thing over there. So we didn't Prius it. We, drove, <laughs> we, drove, <laughs> we, we pull up and... um. Will says, well, it's Loma, and he tells me the history of it, and we go and we go have the conversation, and Dart, he lets me know Dart, and comes in, I'm just like, oh, shit, I get a chance to work with somebody who gets me, mm -hmm. not somebody who's trying to get me. And then I see the owner discovered Pac, and you know, for those of y'all who like Pac, a lot of y'all heard later Pac, the more flamboyant Pac, the dope Pac, but man, when you heard this record called Brenda's Having a Baby, mm -hmm. that's right. and when you heard, you know, Soldier Story about breaking his brother out of jail, you knew you had heard something special and different. And my thing was like, oh, there's a possibility these people get mm. what I'm doing. And so whether it's Adam or Dart, like say Ryan and Tom, I felt got it even down to even down to the people who are just in the company, the kid that's doing graphics and 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 IG, it's like they really champion dope shit. Mm -hmm. Whether it's corn that's over there, or Denzel Curry, it's like I felt I felt like finally I'm at a place where they get it. Right. So I love marching around doing the radio. I was just out there with them. Um, and, and Tom challenged me on some stuff, I challenged back. Like, we ought to be doing a Chitlin Circuit radio run. Right, right, right. So yeah, I talked myself into goddamn Columbus, Savannah, <laughs> Macon, mm -hmm. and, and I'll be, be out there soon, but I, I just, I, I don't even like to call it the Chitlin Circuit no more. I like to call that the heart and soul of, of, of a black America. The heart and soul, that's heart a less law. I still like Chitlin Circuit. I don't eat Chitlin's, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only because, <laughs> what is it, over 60% of all black people are in the South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read, and read that book, guys, The Devil You Know by Charles Blow. Mm -hmm. Read that book, it'll mm -hmm. talk about It'll tell you how to reestablish power where we're from because we got a lot more than we think we do. I got Absolutely. two more questions. Exit yes, nine. Exit nine, man. Um, man, Blast, I just love you. And I, I just, man, I, Blast is, Will sent me Blast's album a couple albums ago, man. I just, and I've been addicted ever since. His team is so cool. We, we've grown a friendship and a kinship. Shouts out to his mom. She's mm -hmm. super cool, man. But, man, I, I told him what I, the spirit, Exit nine. Um, shouts out to my man Mike uh, from All In Films who called me the Exit Nine Goat, which is hilarious. Exit Nine is the Adamsville exit. That's right. When you get off, when you get off in Adamsville, you get off on Martin Luther King Drive, mm -hmm. and every Martin Luther King Drive is the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. You get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly of my people, and I love, I love that song because it's it's the, my today was a good day, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's it, it's and it references toward the end, you know. I say thank the Lord, I ain't a junkie, I ain't an alcoholic, because I see what. The worst of life have done to good men. And you see that on Exit Nine too, but man, it's a lot of good on Exit Nine. It's a lot of cool things. So this is a record that I love. It's a record that I love. The last song on the album, High and Holy. High and Holy. Man, that's um her, Rita Marley say that. Uh, you know, her and Bob we get high and holy. And I um uh, I just it that never left me. And I remember Shay referenced it too. It just never left me. Even while I'm dressed in white today, I wanna I wanna feel like at one with my ancestors and at mm -hmm. peace and and a lot of times when when I when I smoke, I don't smoke when I'm in a bad mood. I don't do. But if I'm if I'm communing with my ancestors, I I take a couple mm -hmm. before I meditate and pray, talk to my grandmother, and my mother. It's just it's a perfect closer. This album is a audio experience, but it is a cinematic experience in that it is best listened to from start to finish. Absolutely, you know what I mean. And um, whichever songs you like more, you'll go back to. Cause just like you pick certain scenes. I watch Goodfellas, I go to the What's So Funny for, you know, I go, mm -hmm. but man, when you got 54, 55 minutes, I encourage you to listen front to back and you're gonna feel like you've read a great novel, like you've seen, like you've seen an amazing movie, like you've had an amazing experience. And even when I come out on tour, I'm headed to tour, we can do in Birmingham, Charlotte, Atlanta. I think first, I'm, I'm not coming out just to walk around side, side to side the stage with the DJ and give you that rap experience that you, that you get in love with say run the jewels in particular my goal is to give you a spiritual experience this time around so we going out with my my choir the midnight revival we going out with dj track star and we gonna we gonna give you an experience mm -hmm. you know? that's what this album time. is a generational statement a spiritual experience yeah. the way you bridge the gap from 
OG Atlanta, like, you know, Three Stacks and CeeLo yeah. with Future and Thug. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, this is a phenomenal project. Thank and you. I would love to see this be the first uh, number one album, mm -hmm. I would, I would, pop album I would too. of the year. I would That's too. Right. Let's do it. Man. So Michael is out today. Go and we appreciate it. you for joining us, brother. Killer my Mike. love and respect, y'all, man. Killer Mike. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Love.